The following is a world-class Bullshitters exclusive. So this next package comes from our good, good friend, Salvador, who I can't show the box on camera because it's too big to be in frame. So first off, oh my God, there's a ton of stuff in here. We got stickers, letters, oh my God. Uh, we got a note that says, read me first. Okay, I will read you first. So it says, oh, hi, Jeff. Please enjoy the contents of this box. It's the sequel of sorts to the first box I sent you. But let's face it, it's not exactly the Terminator 2 of boxes. It's closer to the Predator 2. It's not as good, but it's not awful. This should be box 3 of 3 unless Amazon packaged the previous two together. Thanks for all you do, and I think I speak for all of us in the People's Republic of Pop Culture when I say we can't wait for Stealing Solo and we miss you on Good Morning Pop Culture. I, for one, always felt like Good Morning Pop Culture, the High Council, and WCBS proper wasn't so much tuning in to listen to everybody speak on their respective shows, but as a chance to hang out with 800 plus of our friends and family. Anyway, keep on keeping on, and 100 subs is just around the corner. Very respectfully, your ferociously loyal fan, Salvador. <laughs> I didn't want seven! I said it four times! <laughs> P.S. Bolo for two cent toys, where I'll offer you my two cents on toys. <laughs> Well, Salvador, thank you very, very much for this really awesome letter. I love the Predator 2 reference. You know, that's the type of shit I get down to. But uh, um, this package must have arrived right after I went to the P.O. Box, because as of this recording, we're about at 107,300 subscribers. And I love this box. And there's so much in this, folks. I'm going to leave this Brennan Huff illustration right here in the foreground, and we're going to start. Ooh. So first off, okay, those are just some plastic bags. We got some kick-ass stuff, though. We'll start with, ooh, Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. Oh, man. I had this toy as a kid, and I'll never forget, I left it at a family member's house, and we couldn't go back because they were one of those like out-of-town family members. So it wasn't just like, hey, we'll come over on Wednesday and pick up Luke Skywalker. He was gone. So I'll never forget my mom taking me out to a restaurant called Fuddruckers, which no longer exists. It's now been replaced by a Chinese buffet. And we went to Walmart and I got another one of these Jedi Knight Luke Skywalkers. But uh, here's a funny story about me and Star Wars. I didn't necessarily know there was more than one movie in the beginning. So I bought these figures thinking that they were just like other costumes for Luke Skywalker. Kind of like when you would get, you know, like a purple Batman. I was like, okay, there's black Luke Skywalker. And uh, no, I was wrong. And when I saw Return of the Jedi, it blew me away. But I love this figure. I have so many good memories of all of these Power of the Force 2 figures. You know, a lot of guys online are like, oh, they're terrible toys. Eh, well, I was five, six, seven years old. I really, really enjoyed these. So uh, these were what I grew up on. But I acknowledge that the newer stuff is more realistic. So let's see. We got uh, Shadows of the Empire. Ooh. Now, I have uh, everything on here. Oh, well, I had as a kid, I had the Chewbacca with the flat top, Prince Shizor, uh, Han, Leia, and Luke. So we got that. Let's see what else is in this wonderful box. Ooh, can't have Luke without Darth Vader. So that's pretty kick-ass. Uh, yeah, I had this. I loved this uh, Darth Vader. It was a lot of fun. And this is the uh, short lightsaber version. Cool. And let's see what's on the back. Now, I have everything, or had everything as a kid uh, that's on the back of this box. Every little thing. Uh, from Luke to the Stormtrooper, everything. Uh, I was a huge Star Wars fan. I kind of just jumped in head first. We got, uh, ooh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Again, another figure I love. I mean, I don't think that looks just like Alec Guinness, but it was 1995. Uh, what do you expect? Hey, but it was enough to get me hooked on Star Wars, and it was enough to get me to love Star Wars enough that I started this channel and everything that you guys watch, so... Remember, if you're a fan of world-class bullshitters, but you hate Star Wars Power of the Force 2 figures, eh, well, they kind of started this whole channel to a degree. And there's that. And then who else do we got? Ooh, we got Corbin Dallas from The Fifth Element. Neat. I do not own this. I only have one reaction figure, and it's uh, Snake Plissken. 
So, what is this? Uh, reaction figures come from who? Is that uh, Funko, right? Yep, they're on the back. And uh, there's the rest of the figures. Corbin Dallas, Lilu with two costumes, uh, Diva Plevagana, Zorg, Ruby Rod, and Mangalore. I love the fifth element. We need to do a commentary. Salvador, if you're interested in that, let me know. Ooh, all right. A NECA 7-inch TMNT movie Leonardo. Guys, I may not talk about the turtles, but I do like them. And Leonardo is my favorite because he's blue or wears blue. So that is kind of a shallow reason why I like him, but it is the main reason I like him. Now, uh, this is from NECA. They had a couple of these in the, was it the 18 inch scale? And I just did not pick them up, but they released the smaller versions and uh, Salvador was kind enough to pick me up a Leonardo. So this is gonna go on the shelf. I kind of want to open this and I also kind of want to hunt down the additional three turtles. I really like that movie. Second one, not so much. Um, blame it on Vanilla Ice. I don't care. Let's see, these packages are always incredibly well packaged. All right, well, for as nice as that one is, um, hey folks, it's Rose Tico. A <laughs> Funko Pop of Rose Tico nonetheless. Funko Specialty Series, Rose, okay. So we got her from The Last Jedi and her I Am A Big Girl costume. And who do we got in the rest of the set? Folks, please do not send the rest of the set to World Class Bullshitters, P.O. Box 5069, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45205. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Salvador, thank you very much. I, uh, I probably have the second largest Rose Tico collection in North America, next to Ethan Van Skyver of Comic Artist Pro Secrets. And that's okay. Ooh, speaking of okay, this is more than okay. Commissioner Gordon from the Batman the Animated Series DC Collectibles line. I have collected some of the figures. Commissioner Gordon was not one. And uh, as you can hear the glee in my voice, Commissioner Gordon, you know what? He's leaving the plastic bag and he's never returning because uh, he's going to go on the shelf very soon. Oh man, look at that. I think Bob Hastings was the voice so we can get a better light. There we go. Commissioner Gordon looks awesome. He's got his uh, swirly whip haircut. And, uh, you know, this is the bigger Commissioner Gordon. He lost a lot of weight in the redesign of the show. That's fine. I prefer the first design of Batman the Animated Series. My favorite cartoon of all time. So let's have the good Commissioner stand over there. Who else we got in here? We got, uh, oh, hey, cool. My personal hero. The Rock. All right, let's see. We got a 2012 WWE Signature Series, The Rock. Kick ass. Rock when he had his goatee. Goatee, tattoo, it doesn't matter. I'm still a fan of the People's Champ. So, thank you, Salvador, for The Rock. He's going to go chill with Commissioner Gordon. I wonder who would win in that fight. The Rock or Commissioner Gordon? Eh, reason will prevail. Ooh, okay. This is awesome. We got Bishop from X-Men. This is a Marvel Legends Bishop. He's got the accessories, so Salvador, you are a collector. You know what's up. Let's see. Bishop's going to go on the shelf, too. Even though a lot of my Marvel Legends don't really live outside of their boxes until I can get out of this uh, house. Uh, Bishop, you know, you're going up, man. Pretty kick-ass. It's funny, too. Every time I open up a figure and it's got the ankle rocker pivot, I think of this... Uh, YouTuber named Glenn Webb who passed away a few years ago sadly but he was one of the best Marvel Legends reviewers on YouTube and uh, I watched everything he ever did so uh, shout out R.I.P. Glenn Webb but uh, yeah man I always think of Bishop on the animated series because that's what introduced me to X-Men and uh, Bishop you can go hang out with The Rock I feel like The Rock and Bishop would make a pretty kick-ass tag team oh speaking of teams you can't have Commissioner Gordon without Batman. There we go. The redesigned Batman. Now, I do like this costume. Maybe I'm not the biggest fan of the redesigned Joker, but I do like the solid black bat. I watched this show religiously. It was the same show to me as a kid. All of a sudden, one day they had different designs, and it was the same voice work, and it was just as good. So I loved it just as much. But we got Batman, and I'm going to... Display Batman, he's got a nice little hanging peg at the top right here, so we'll put Batman on the wall next to some of my Spider-Man stuff. You know, Salvador, you know me so well. It's safe to say, of all the listeners, you get me. Speaking of get me, this is taking me back. 
Mighty Morphin Power Rangers VHS tapes. Holy shit. Day of the Dumpster, that's the first episode. And the Green Ranger miniseries part one. Now we have a VCR somewhere in the house. I want to hook the, the VCR up just to watch like the pre-video commercials. Because those were my favorite parts as a kid. Because you'd get the Power Ranger toy commercial. And you'd get something else. Like stay tuned for more offers from Saban. And it was just awesome. And uh, Power Rangers, I know a lot of people laugh. And that's fine. It is what it is. It was what it was. But to me, it was the coolest thing I had ever seen at the time. I didn't know Japanese Sentai. I didn't know anything. I just knew these five people, and eventually this sixth guy. And it was awesome. Maybe one year I'll show my White Ranger Halloween costume on camera. I'm not going to wear it because I was five. And I'm much larger than I was at five years old. But uh, it'll be good for a laugh. And there they are. And it's funny, I do collect some VHS tapes, and now Power Rangers is going to be added to that collection. Let's stick with Power Rangers for a minute. We got some Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie. Um, I guess these are those like chase variant figure things that you get. Um, action vinyls. Ooh, okay. Let's see what we got inside. So, oh, where's Japanese Steel? I don't want to rip the boxes open. But I wonder what we're going to get. It's a surprise in every box. I hope I don't get an Alpha 5. Okay. So we're back. Who did we get? Who did we get? We got... Oh, a plastic bag. A very nice plastic bag. I remember the build-up to this movie. I was so excited. It wasn't even funny. And then I actually wore that white Power Ranger costume to the movie. And uh, who do we got? We got... All right, the Tyrannosaurus Red Ranger Zord. All right, cool. Let's see, got a movable mouth. Cool. I love stuff like this because the surprise aspect is what really gets you. Got the Red Ranger Zord. I feel like he's missing some teeth. It's like the uh, grandpa version. But let's see what else we got from Power Rangers. Um, come on, White Ranger. Come on, Tommy. You know, I'll tell this story too while I'm opening up the box. Uh, Christmas 1995, all I wanted was the White Ranger, and after all my Christmas shopping had been done and all my gifts that I didn't want were returned to my new stuff, uh, I went to Walgreens, and I found that White Ranger, and I said, Mom, Mom, I gotta get it, can I get it? And she goes, okay. So, that's the story we, each, we always laugh about. And we got, alright, the Pterodactyl Zord. Well, this is Kimberly's Zord. These are actually pretty sturdy. Like, this is as sturdy as the original Megazord. The wings were... You know, whatever on that toy, but this is fun. So is it going to fly out of the volcano and hit the tree like it does in every episode? Well, I don't know. There's no trees in here. But let's see what else is in here. So we got, uh, I'm curious. Oh, no shit. <laughs> this kicks ass. Uh, this can't even stay in the bag that it came in because it's going to be displayed. I might take this to Horror Hound. Frank Reynolds. <laughs> Oh my god, yes. Now I kind of got to buy the rest of them. So, uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is my favorite comedy. Definitely. I wanted to say favorite show, but I still like the Twilight Zone in Miami Vice. But It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is incredible. Frank Reynolds, Dan DeVito. Does this fuck on this, <laughs> Talks! Alright, what else did he say? I will be too, Frank. Soon. I will be too. I thought I was Lord Spanish. Oh my god, this is awesome. This is so awesome. You know, you're calling your box the Predator 2? Um, I don't know, man. You're making me like Predator 2 a lot more. Ooh, we got some more Batman the Animated Series stuff. And now this is classic Batman the Animated Series stuff. So first off, from the Adventures of Batman and Robin, a Ra's al Ghul figure, which I don't own. Uh, as a kid, I only had Batman. And then as an adult, I bought Batman and the Joker. But we got Ra's al Ghul in his armor. 
See, now I kind of want to open these, but I know I shouldn't because it's going to cause a lot of problems. And there's all those Batman costumes that I was telling you guys about. Purple Batman, yellow Batman. I mean, he is the dark defender of the night and all this other stuff. The Nightman, if you will. And uh, I remember I had a friend. We would go to his birthday each year, and I'd always take him a Batman figure. And I think we bought him this Piranha Blade Batman. I don't know why that one's standing out to me. But Ra's al Ghul's not alone. From Mask of the Phantasm, we have Andrea Beaumont. Now, I'm a huge fan of that movie. I would consider that my favorite animated film. And uh, this is the world's biggest spoiler. Who's the Phantasm? This chick. <laughs> As seen in the Batman animated movie. Woo! And what do we got on the back? We got uh, collect all the Batman figures. I would love to. I have. I take that back. I have Catwoman. My cousin bought me Catwoman because she thought Catwoman was cool. Uh, I had a different Bruce Wayne and all that stuff. Where is this? And I had the motorcycle, but I did not have the Batmobile. Oh, I need to rectify that. Let's see. I need some better light. Damn. You know when I started recording? Okay. And we still got... Killer Croc. <laughs> Uh, my favorite episode, eh, not my favorite episode, but one of my favorite episodes is Almost Got Him. And Killer Croc, Two-Face, Poison Ivy, the Joker, Penguin, and maybe someone else, they're all playing cards, talking about times where Batman almost was captured by the villains. And uh, Killer Croc's running line is, I hit him with a rock! Or something along those lines. And then at the end of the episode, it turns out that it's not really Killer Croc, but it's Batman in disguise, and he's been listening to the stories the whole time. It's it's one of the best cartoon episodes ever made. And now I got Killer Croc to add the list. There's my favorite Batman, uh, Combat Belt Batman. That was the only one that was in the suit from the show. And I have a lot of those. So, thank you, man. This it just keeps getting better. It keeps on oh shit, it keeps on going. Let's keep with the animated series, love. We got uh, the Mad Hatter. This comes from the new adventures of Batman. Um, I have the Batman and the Joker to go with this, but now I have the Mad Hatter. You know, I kind of felt bad for the Mad Hatter in the episode where uh, he fell in love with the girl and he kind of got scorned. You know, I know he's the villain, but uh, sometimes the best villains, you can have sympathy for them. We have this really awesome illustration on the back. I don't know if that is Bruce Tim artwork or just a, an artist at Kenner who tried to, now it's Hasbro technically at this time, that tried to match that style. But uh, Arkham Asylum, 3.09 a.m., the notorious Mad Hatter has plotted a massive jailbreak of the city's most dangerous criminals in order to unleash a villainous free-for-all. Luckily, Batman and his heroic companions are there to stop it. Use the dynamic decoder gear from the detective Batman, crime solver Nightwing, and crime fighter Robin to locate camouflaged heroes so that you too can help rescue Gotham City from disaster. Hint. Clues can be found on figures, too. Ooh. And we got this, uh... Rabbit thing. So, this is cool as shit. <laughs> I love everything in this box. Everything in this box. I just need, I need more space for it. That's all I can say. Oh, man. Alright. So let's take it back a little further. From uh, Batman the Animated Series to Batman Returns. Oh, man, we got the Penguin. This is a very Danny DeVito-centric box. I dig it. So... The Penguin figure is a repaint of the old, was it Superpowers, from back in the day, because for some reason they either didn't get the likeness rights to Danny DeVito or they didn't want to make a Danny DeVito Penguin figure because he was too horrific, and so they gave us this, and uh, it looks nothing like in the movie, but that's okay. And now this has taken me back, oh, the back of the box, the Dark Knight collection, and all this stuff. Let's see, as a kid I had Robin... I had that Batman for sure. I had the Bat Coop. And I think I had this Arctic Batman. Almost sure I had that. But I had a lot of toys as a kid, as you could tell. I never got rid of any of them. So my mom's been pretty kick-ass about that. Now, this was another one I didn't have as a kid. The Penguin Commandos. So maybe down the road when I move, I'll open some of this stuff up. And we can do a uh, Michael Keaton slash Tim Burton Batman display because I do have a brand new inbox that was a crime attack Batman or something where he's got the black movie costume maybe that's combat belt Batman I don't know they have stupid names the only one that's in the movie suit I have that to go with these penguins and then the penguin maybe we'll rustle up a Catwoman. oh these got it's got a way better card back 
So, let's see. Where would be? I have this Bruce Wayne. I had Robin. I always wanted this Batmobile. Never got it. I got a different version of the Batcave from uh, Batman Forever. Also had... Uh... Here's a story. So, Christmas 1992. This 15-inch Batman. My cousin Michael got one. And I wanted it so bad because I loved Batman. But instead, my uncle that bought him Batman bought me Hulk Hogan. At the time, I didn't appreciate it, but now as an adult, that kind of set me on the path that I'm on now as a wrestling fan. Even though it gets kind of shitty at times, uh, it's brought me a lot of good friends, like Dion. So, uh, if it wasn't for my uncle's uh, intention to get me into wrestling early, there may be no podcast, because there may be uh, no friendship between Jeff and Dion. And finally, the movie that started it, Batman 89. Oh, distributed by Video Channels. Oh my god, I love... This is probably... No, not my favorite. My ultimate favorite... Okay, so the videotape openings uh, used to be awesome. You'd get a couple of trailers, commercials, and then the movie would start. Uh, My favorite of all time is Dumb and Dumber, because I've watched it probably a hundred times. That's not an exaggeration. But Batman was close. I used to love the Warner Brothers ad, the Diet Coke commercial, and I think the movie just started right after that. Uh, 1989 had some great Diet Coke commercials, just like a uh, Indiana Jones one. That's another awesome one that you guys should check out. But uh, I love this. I love this movie. This movie turns 30. This is one of the movies that... uh, If we're going to do a top 10 most important films to me, this is right near... Oh man, this might be number 5 and most important to me. Because it might not be my favorite film, but it has set me up on a path that a lot of you guys are happy that I'm on. Now... A moment ago, I did misspeak and said finally because we got one final piece, and this is too cool. Um, This is awesome. Carnage. You guys remember Carnage? Maximum Carnage is a video game. So there we go. Get him in the frame. I need a better setup. I acknowledge that. Deluxe Edition Carnage. I loved these as a kid. These uh, giant Toy Biz figures. So this is what a 10 inch, fully posable, weapon included Carnage from Toy Biz, who's no longer around. And it looks like we got some comic book panels inside of the box, which kicks ass. We got the weapon, which clips on. And, uh, oh man, here we go. Spider-Man from the new animated series. Well, uh, I don't think 1994 is too new anymore. But uh, there we go. We got the smaller 5-inch figures. As a kid, I had both of those Spider-Man figures. None of the villains. Never wanted them. That was all on me. I could have got them, never got them. And we got some of the 10-inch figures. I have that Spider-Man on my shelf. Uh, He is very loose. I think he actually fell behind the shelf. So until I move, he's a goner. And then we got a few more of the deluxe figures. And then we have a Carnage card. It says, Your unfriendly neighborhood supervillain, Carnage, began as the convicted criminal Cletus Cassidy. Now combined with the spawn of Venom, Carnage is an evil monster, adding to the responsibility Spider-Man feels for unintentionally bringing the symbiote alien to Earth. Excuse me, symbiotic alien to Earth. Oh my god, so that's, this is awesome. So this all came from Salvador. Uh, dude, thank you so much for everything. Uh, from the letter to just everything. This was fun. I, You know, folks, you think this is the end of the episode, there's still another box. So uh, I'm going to get everything put away, and we're going to come back, and we're going to close out this P.O. Box thing. Our final package comes from Reality's Frank, and much like everything Reality's Frank sends, it comes in a giant box, so I can't show it on camera, but holy shit. Oh, my God. What? Yeah, okay. Uh, Kendo, eat your heart out. Clerks, Deluxe Edition Randall Graves action figure. I'm so sorry for this being out of frame. I need a better setup. So again, here's Dante and Randall, and we'll move over here to see Jay and Silent Bob and Frank Reynolds. (laughs) No, these are awesome. Let's see what we can do from this camera angle. We can zoom in a bit, and we'll look at uh, Silent Bob. Looks like Kevin Smith. Well, that's Jason Mewes. That looks a lot like Randall. And that definitely looks like Dante. So, Frank, thank you so much 
for sending this excellent pack of Clerks action figures. And of course, the nemesis of Bluntman and Chronic, Cockknocker. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at it. And listen to that storm. Holy shit. So, I think I'm going to get going, folks. Uh, yeah, there's really... Uh, Don't want to get washed away with my house. So to everyone out there who sent us stuff from the P.O. Box, I'd like to personally thank each and every one of you. Uh, guys, thank you not only for the stuff you send to the P.O. Box, but thank you to everybody who watches the channel and makes World Class Bullshitters the big success that it has become. Uh, I will be back next time when I go to the P.O. Box and get enough stuff to make another video. If you guys are kicking ass, uh, everything was awesome from the letters to the Batarangs, to the Godzilla figures, and everything in between. Uh, each and every one of your uh, gifts and whatever you wanted to give us to the channel is not only appreciated, but uh, it will be well loved and added to my private collection. So folks, until next time, thank you for watching, and as always, be excellent to each other.